welcome to the Trend Talk. We are your hosts, Bel Hernandez and Maravina Jaimes. Today, we welcome multiple award winning writer producer Ligia Villalobos, known for La Misma Luna and projects at Netflix and Disney. Today, she joins us to tell us about her current projects. Then we'll talk to a different kind of producer, someone who at a young age is producing results in the food industry. We'll be talking to Katie Jezebel Dubon, a Latin American food importer. Don't go away. We'll be right back with writer-producer Ligia Villalobos and Katie Jezebel Dubon. Our next guest is writer-producer Ligia Villalobos, known for her work in Nickelodeon's Go Diego Go and the highly acclaimed La Misma Luna Under the Same Moon film, which starred Kate Del Castillo and Eugenio Derbez before they made that big crossover into the U.S. mainstream. She has received numerous awards, including the Humanist Prize and the Imagen Award prestigious Norman Lear Writers Award. And we want to welcome Ligia Villalobos. Bienvenida. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here. And we are so happy to have you. Well, we're going to get right to it. I mean, first off, we want to ask you about your involvement uh, as the wonderful uh, Latina writer that you are with the Writers Guild and the Film Academy which finally invited so many award-winning and well-respected casting directors and writers and filmmakers of color. Um, tell us about the Academy's Owning Our Own Stories recent virtual discussion. Sure, and, and you know, the first thing that I should say about that is I've done multiple things for the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences, and I'm actually not a member of the Motion what? Pictures Arts and Sciences, yes. So in order for you to be a member of the Academy as a writer, you need to have a minimum of two films produced. And then you still have to go through the, you know, somebody sponsoring you or voting for you. So there's a whole process that just because you have two films doesn't mean that you're going to get in. Mm -hmm. And so I, I have one film, I've done other films that are TV movies, but as a writer, I have only done one movie. I've done other movies as a producer, but not as a writer. So I, I wanted you to know that because it, it actually is still uh, hard to get into the academy. But with that said, they've actually asked me to do uh, several things for them in the past. And, and the most recent thing that we did is they have a whole uh, campaign going about telling different kinds of stories with female writers of color. And so Lulu Wang was in the conversation who did Farewell. Farewell. And then uh, Mi Sun who did uh, Belle. There was a wonderful Native American um, writer director that I had never met before from Canada that does documentaries. And then uh, me as a Latina. And we just had a conversation about the importance of getting our stories out there. And you know, one of the things that I mentioned is as Latinos, we maybe get a movie every three to five years. Like we don't even get a movie every year. And part of the problem I feel is that pro uh, producers or even you know studios have made a decision that they can get movies from Latin America. And so all of a sudden, even though I'm really happy that we have access to those films, right? Whether it's an acquisition from, you know, the art house companies like Fox Searchlight or Focus or, you know, uh, Miramax, those kinds of companies that acquire that. And even though we get a lot of those now through Netflix and even Hulu, you know, we have all of this programming coming in from South America now. I don't think it's making it better for those of us who live in this country and want to tell our stories, want to tell them in English, want to tell a Latino or Latinx experience in the United States, that I think in some ways it has become harder as a result of them having a chance to just acquire programming versus produce programming. Can so I that was one of the things we talked about in in, in that I session. totally agree with you, <laughs> yeah, that, that is something that, that I, it's been one of my pet peeves, but with your movie, La Misma Luna, um, that one was a groundbreaker on many different levels because what it did, and I believe it's the template for Eugenio Derbez's success, mm -hmm. 
what he does with the movie, because your movie, La Misma Luna, um, was cast with two um, well-known Mexican actors, Eugenio Derbez and Kate del Castillo, and then actors from the U.S. And it was a story where they come to the U.S. and it just worked beautifully. It, it was, was a bridge. A and and that, that was, to me, that's the, the, the template that uh, Eugenio does now with his hits. He's got hits uh, now. No, and I, I, and I agree. But again, we had to do it independently. Exactly. And then we had to go into a film festival and then we were acquired. So even though the movie was released by Fox Searchlight and at the time the Weinstein Company, which doesn't even exist anymore, but that, that movie would not have been done by a studio. And we had to shoot it in Mexico and we had to shoot it for under $2 million. Like there were all of these conditions that we had to go through in order to hopefully get a movie that was released in the United States by an American company and that had done well. And see, it was a bona fide hit because it was made for two million, but it went to went and made thirteen million dollars, and in this country, and almost thirty million worldwide. Thirty yeah. million worldwide, and wow. to, to in Hollywood terms, that's a bona fide hit. So you think, why didn't they do it again? Because they always say, "Oh, Latino movies don't make money." That one did, and yet right. they don't. And and it's right. It's what you say. They can go get. Uh, less less expensive movies than make one put money in and make it here in the U.S. And excuse me, we are the Latinos. We are the number one film going audience. The people in the U.S. Right. Okay, not I in Mexico, I not solution. anywhere. Us, the Latinos I in the U.S. I so, think I have the perfect solution for several things. Just do the sequel. What's the matter with you, Ligia? <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> the money. Just do the sequel. The That'll be the second movie. You'll be in. in <laughs> you'll, you'll, you know uh, what? It's funny yeah. enough. I talked about that uh, about a year ago or two years ago, because I thought that we could do a movie with Carlitos, who now is around 18, 19 years old. Yes. And make him a dreamer. Oh yes. And do a whole story about you know what happened ten years later after he arrived in this country and is now entering university. But unfortunately, you know, uh, one, we don't own the movie. You know, it's not like once the movie is acquired, it's owned by the studio. And 50% of the ownership, which was the Weinstein Company, they went under bankruptcy. And so even trying to have the conversations are almost impossible until that situation is resolved. Um, but, you know, that's just, that's just my own experience with that. I still, like, like for me, I'll tell you what makes me really... Um, which, what is a little bit frustrating. Mm -hmm. For the first time in years, we're going to have two big budget studio films that are going to be released in theaters if this pandemic ever goes away. And neither film is directed by a Latino. And so even though I'm really happy that we have a new version of West Side Story. And even though I'm really happy that we're gonna have In the Heights, it's still shocking to me that considering that four out of the last six director Oscar went to a Mexican director, that the studios are still making decisions not to hire us in those roles. And, you know, thank God that one of them is a person of color. So I'm actually really happy that one of those two films is directed by a person of color. But we are still in a position, if, if we do a comparison with African-American films, African-American films have approximately 14 to 20 movies released a year, right? We rarely have one movie released a year. And those stories are, for the most part, being directed by Black filmmakers mm -hmm. and written by Black filmmakers. So they are telling their own stories. We're still not doing that, even with a movie like Dora the Explorer. Right. We still have a white director directing that movie. We still have the first writer on that movie not being a Latino. And you have a bunch of projects that projects that are that. So can you tell us a little bit of some of the projects that you have that you're working yes. on? 
Sure. So because of all these issues that we've been talking about, I mainly work in television because I find television an easier way to not only tell the stories that I want to tell, but also have the ability, if one of my stories moves forward, to hire the next generation of writers, mm -hmm. and, which you can't do in a film. You know, in a film, you're hired as a writer and that's, and you're the writer, but in television, you have the ability to bring other people into the project that you are doing. And so currently I am developing a one hour drama for HBO Max uh, called Gabby, a Girl in Pieces, which is based on a novel by Isabel Quintero. And uh, we'll see what happens with that. It's like with everything else, you know, you're on the run to try to get it to series with a hundred other shows. There's COVID, which has obviously impacted the entire industry and what they're going to decide to actually get into production and not what and what not to get into production. So that's a whole other thing. But um, but I'm grateful for the opportunity to be developing this wonderful um, novel, which is really about um, how a young girl deals with the addiction of a father. And the reason why I took it, because I, you know, I had to have those conversations for myself about like, do I want to put a person of color who is an addict? Um, but for me, at the end of the day, the story really was about a girl who dealing with this sort of tragic thing at home, who is the addiction of a dad, is still determined to make it to Berkeley hmm. and to go to college. And I also thought it was important to deal with, you know, a lot of times we deal in stories about how parents deal with the addiction of children. And so I like the idea of exploring addiction <clears throat> through the point of view of a young girl. And that's the reason why I decided to take this on. And then I'm doing a preschool series for Sesame Workshop. Um, which is the production company that does Sesame Street. So most people yes, know Sesame Street. Uh, it's a curriculum driven preschool animated series. It doesn't have any of the characters from Sesame Street. They're completely new characters and it's all Latino. Yay, I love it. <laughs> uh, and then I just got hired to do another series for DreamWorks Animation, which has a Latina girl at the lead. And, and unfortunately, on both of those, I can't mention a lot of details, but um, I, I took it specifically on because I knew that the, the girl was going to be a, uh, a Mexican-American girl, which I got. Well, we are it. so excited. Uh, I mean, you're giving us a lot of hope. And the good thing is you're focusing on the youth, which makes the difference. Yeah, we have absolutely enjoyed having you. Will you come back and talk to us? At the of course. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. And as long as you have a conversation with two Latinas. Yay, we uh, really yes, and we could go on forever, but it was great talking to you. And everyone, please don't go away. We'll be right back with Katie Jezebel Dubon. Earlier this week, we had the opportunity to speak to Katie Jezebel Dubon. She is in her 20s, and already she is the regional sales manager for Bravo Foods. Her job is exciting. It encompasses so much. Let's take a look. And we're back. Sometimes you want to duplicate a favorite uh, family recipe, but you don't have all the ingredients on hand. Or sometimes you know that popular Latino canned products are just full of MSG and high in sodium. The good news is that Bravo Foods has a unique way of getting you the right spices right to your door. Uh, these ingredients are ready for sazonar y cocinar. And we welcome Katie. Welcome, Katie, the regional sales manager of Bravo Foods. That's impressive because I know that Bravo Foods is really growing because you import foods from Latin America, which really does a big service to a lot of people who've come from Latin America and are missing those foods that they had that they love so much in their country. And you're bringing them in and making a lot of people happy. Absolutely. But your company is growing and growing, uh, and you are in charge of keeping those sales goals in check. You're also in charge of community relations. So tell me, how has the company grown in these past five years? Well, the, actually, the last five years have been amazing. Um, it's been a great experience being a part of this venture with Bravo Foods. 
Uh, we have over 500 clients all over the West Coast. We can, you can find our products actually up north, San Francisco in the Bay Area, Arizona, Las Vegas, Utah, Colorado. Um, we've even sent some of our products in Australia. People in Australia are looking for um, a taste from home, basically, that's what it is. Because you can't really, um, there's, there's, you can't duplicate these types of products, these experiences that people have grown up with. And, you know, we've received messages, we've received letters, emails saying that it takes them back to a time when they were younger. Um, they remember being home with their grandmothers, with their mothers and their, their family members in special moments that they've shared, just being able to taste these authentic, authentic products. It doesn't compare. So in the last five years, we've done really amazing things. Um, and by 2021, instead of having 500 clients, we expect to have a thousand, um, you know, and, and it's, it's, it's great. I hear the demand is so great that you are now even selling on Amazon. How does that work? Well, we brought the idea, uh, we came together and because of the demand and us being mostly out in the West Coast, people in, in you know, there's, there's people everywhere in Canada who are looking for our products, people in New Mexico, people in Europe, uh, you know, Latinos are everywhere. And, um, you know, with Amazon, it allows them to bring these tastes directly to their door because now everything's online, it's virtual, right? Including this, this interview. Um, right. Yeah, so with the Amazon, even that, you know, with the whole COVID um, going on, we were doing over 450 sales a day just on Amazon. Wow. We launched Amazon about a year ago. Well, we're going to have to uh, rename Amazon Amazonas, which is what it really, really is. But uh, because Bravo Foods just, you have such a huge variety of Latin foods and spices. And, you know, we were really impressed with the pre-packaging of the sazon, the ingredients, everything you need to just, you know, go ahead and add it to the mix. Can you tell us a little more of these pre-packaged um, items? Sure. Um, well, we actually have um, a variety. Uh, we have prepackaged um, spices. For example, you know, something very traditional for Central American Salvadorians is the um, especia para pavo. Wow. Mm. I'd be more than happy to show you. Please show us. And it's so delicious. Um, I was able to set up this for you guys. Especially wow. The especia para cocinar pavo or turkey. Um, you know, it comes prepared. Everything you need is basically in here, pepitoria, jojoli, uh, premia de ayote, chiles, um, especia, all, all, everything is it's ready, ready to go. Um, same thing for the tamales. If you're looking to make the traditional Central American tamales, mm -hmm. el ajo as well to complement these dishes. And, uh, you know, it's just a variety of different spices that you can make on a daily basis or for your traditional family meals. Right. Um, we particularly like uh, relajo because it's always fun to cook in the kitchen. And if it's already coming right to your door and all you have to do is put it in the pot, it, it's even easier. So, relajo is yeah. very delicious and um, it's done very well on Amazon as well because you can't find it. Right. Well, besides Amazon, though, I mean, aren't you, I, I think it's probably easier for you to tell us where you're not, <laughs> because we understand you're in so many different stores. Tell us a couple of the chains that you're in. Well, you can find us at your local Vallarta supermarkets, um, Garbanas. If you are in Las Vegas, you can find us at La Bonita supermarkets, uh, Las Marianas. If you're up north, you can find us in Menda Mendoza Valley Foods, um, Las Montañas. Uh, you I mean, we're looking to expand a lot, you know, in the next few years that you can find our products at your, you know, closest supermarkets. That's definitely the goal. I made your uh, horchata. And one of the things that I loved, and you just mentioned, your mm -hmm. packaging, it all comes all raw. For instance, the horchata. I thought horchata was just a uh, polvo, the horchata, but your package comes with the ingredients. Yeah, show that to us.
whole foods is that you can add the uh, most important ingredient, which is the love and the patience, yeah. actually. Could. Carolina, <laughs> tell us what you made with the horchata. I went to town. Uh, I made the horchata, and I decided I'm going to make some ice cream uh, using a, a, a keto recipe. But basically, it's taking, um, you know, your products cream and then using the horchata. You know, you use some of it, and the ice cream is absolutely delicious. And again, you get to control the amount of sugar. You get all those flavors in there. Anyway, I wish I could show you, but it's gone. <laughs> Between my son and I made it, but um, it's very fun to uh, you know to actually hands on you know with the rest with the ingredients brown them and you know just oh the aroma of everything it's it's you need to you need this in your kitchen it's really delicious. <laughs> so tell it there was something exciting that you have done is you've provided all your delicious products to, in this time of the epidemic, you've made some um, gift baskets and you've donated them. Tell yeah. us who you donated to, what delicious products you put in there. Well, we actually did a collaboration with Dolan Law Firm and the City of Bell Gardens. Uh, we did a food drive, um, you know, we, this, this experience was amazing. A lot of people showed, we actually, um, had the city, the police actually assist us with traffic because from the city of Bell Gardens, we were like backed all the way into the city of Downey. Um, you know, we did have uh, these goods, you know, that we were able to give to the community. A lot of people were very excited. They began making line at four or five in the morning. And it, we, you know, we started we were supposed to start at 9 a.m., but we were ready to go and we had to start at 8 a.m. because of the traffic. A lot of people did show. We donated over a, a thousand, you know, bags of goodies everywhere from, you know, rice to beans, black beans, red beans, lentils, um, even chow mein. You know, <laughs> we donated a lot of products to these families. Um, it was it was very great. Um, we hope to in the future do more types of events like this with other cities as well because you know, unfortunately, our community needs needs the help, especially right now with the COVID. You're so young and you're um, you know doing this wonderful important work, especially the the food giveaway and during this time, um, like ten years ago or when you this is a family business. Did you always know? that you were gonna get into the family business? How did that uh, happen? Um, I always knew I was gonna, I was gonna join the Bravo team, yes. I always knew. Um, you know, it's, it's funny because when we walk around through the production and we see everything um, in the works, I, it takes me back when this was fun to me, packaging beans, packaging spices, um, everything, this was this was fun to me. So going to work is it's it's not going to work. It's it's going to have fun because you know you got to really love what you do, right? And and that's exactly that's exactly how it is for me on a daily basis. I look forward to to going to do what it is that I do. Well, we really appreciate what you're doing. Don't forget to follow uh, Bravo Foods USA. Thank you so much, Katie. It was so wonderful to learn about your passion for Bravo Foods and the wonderful products that you guys have. Congratulations. Keep Thank on you. doing it. Thank you very much. I uh, really appreciate you guys having me on your show. It was wonderful to meet you. Este verano, refrescate con la original Bravo Cola Champán. Sabor único, siempre contigo.
our Trend Talk Trendsetter shout out of the week goes to the U.S. Soccer Foundation, which creates safe places to play, to get mentorship, and learn for free to underserved kids through their program, Soccer for Success, with 1,500 sites in 375 communities across America. But they need your help to do more. So please donate to the U.S. Soccer Foundation. And don't forget to follow us on the Trend Talk Show because you know if it's trending, we're talking. Hey, hey, hey.